Today I had the pleasure of being with Bobby Bright. You've been in the Wiregrass lately. I saw you was in Enterprise yesterday at Dothan today. Tell us what's going on and what's happening. I was in Ozark earlier today too. Great. And Troy. So we're covering the... You're uh, close to your birthplace. In you might, City. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're just doing what we uh, promised and committed to do and that is cover the district and we're not, we're not leaving any uh, community untouched. Uh, we're going out there talking to folks and making sure they they know that we care and and letting them know that if we get back in there we're going to be doing the same thing that we did years ago talking to people i won't send representatives out out there i'll send myself and i will talk and be with anybody that wants to talk to their congressman uh they'll have my attention when you were in congress before you touched every county that you represented we did and uh that's a People don't realize how big this district is. How big is this district? It's now 15 counties, and we've got 87 incorporated areas of this district, and uh, it, it takes a, a task to cover every single community out there. Uh, but you know what? That's what a representative, if they truly want to be a, a true representative, they have to do that, and the people expect that, and I will do it again. Uh, I hope I hope that people uh, will know that uh, they'll have a direct voice to Washington by way of me, not any of my representatives or any of my staff members. What are some of the issues in this race uh, that the people need to be aware of? Three issues, and, and I think it's important. Number one, support our president. Make sure that you're behind him. That doesn't mean that you have to be a yes person. I've never been a yes man, and I never will be, but I support him. I support him trying to to drain the swamp and to shake up Washington, D.C. It needs it bad. I was there and I had first-hand knowledge of, of, of that. Uh, I'm going to support him, his America First agenda. It's about time that we, we consider our needs here at home more than other people's needs afar who are out there to rip us off, take our resources, take our assets, and then stab us in the back. We're not, we don't need to be doing that anymore, and I think uh, the president has, has that uh, desire, and I have that same desire, so I think we'll pair up pretty, pretty, pretty well in the future. Uh, the second is we will, our constituent services, I think, have been lacking over the last several years, and we're going to pick those back up, and, and we're going to be, once again, a nationally recognized congressional staff services uh, district as far as I'm concerned. When we were in there before, we had one of the best staffs uh, any congressman could have. And it's because all of my staff members, we, we were select in trying to uh, get the best, and we got the best, and they really worked hard. And third, we're going to get back on the very critical uh, uh, committees that affect my, uh, District 2 uh, more so than any other committees, Armed Services and Agriculture. You know, <clears throat> you can be on important committees in Washington, but if you're not on the committees that directly affect the, the people in your district, that's not a real important committee as far as I'm concerned. Armed Services and Agriculture are the committees that Bill Dickerson, Terry Everett, and I served on for over 50 years. And to be, to have us, to have no representation at the table on those committees are, is, is critical. And uh, our present representative chose voluntarily to get off of those two committees and uh, went on what she referred, what we refer to in Washington as the wine and dine committee appropriations. So we're going to get back on those key committees and we're going to take care of our veterans, we're going to take care of our military bases, and we're going to take care of the, the agriculture industry and our farmers. So that's, that's so key. So those are three issues right at hand that we need to uh, correct and we're going to make sure we do that. And on July the 17th, the people are going to send a strong message to our representative that uh, when she disconnected to the people down here in Alabama, we're going to disconnect her uh, on election day. It's very important on July the 17th that everybody goes and votes because every vote counts. We had uh, 93,000 votes uh, cast in District 2 for the, in the primary. We expect about a third of that number to show up in the runoff. So we're looking around 30,000 votes. So it's going to be a close election. Every vote will count. And it's really going to be a battle of, 
who can turn out their supporters uh, more, and I think we can do that. Our supporters are passionate about uh, changing their representative in Washington, and they're going to show up in droves, and we are we're expecting them to do it, and I think they will. It's very important for this area to fight for Fort Rooker for our <coughs> military base, which also around Mon uh, Montgomery and the military base at sure. Montgomery. So uh, yeah, it it is, and guess what? We have no one at the table to fight for us. We have no one at the table when they're discussing discussing discussion discussions pertaining to the missions at Fort Rooker and at Maxwell. No one there representing District Two, and uh, thanks to our present representative. So, you know, people want their voices to be heard, and when we don't have anybody at the table, how can they be heard? So we're going to reward our representative on July the 17th uh, with, a, with a strong message that she should have stayed on those key committees rather than choosing to elevate her popularity in Washington on another uh, committee that she, she chose for herself, not for the people of District 2. In closing, I want to ask a question. Right. You were quiet for a long time yep. after you left Congress. Why now is a specific reason you're getting back into the, <clears throat> the political limelight or the race? I've always been someone to when, sit and watch and look and learn. And I sat there on my farm. I wasn't wasting time. I was developing my farm. I've got a, a successful agribusiness in, in Elmore County where I raise cattle and hay and, and uh, on a little fishing uh, park in, in, in Elmore County. A lot of people visit, come fish and camp and picnic and do things like that. But as I sat there and as I worked my farm, I watched uh, our representative. We gave her eight years to do something good for the district and we kept seeing nothing being done. So I always, there's just something internal about me that when I see there's a need I always plug myself into that need and try to uh, make things happen, and that's what we intend to do is we're going to do something better uh, for the people of District 2. I know how to do it as Mayor of Montgomery for 10 years. We made things good happen for our capital city, and uh, we were making some good things uh, happen in in uh, the Wiregrass and in, in District 2 when I was up there before. So we're going to get back in, in the saddle and People are going to be proud of what we can accomplish in Washington. July 17th, Bobby Bright for the United States Congress. That's right, and I want to once again invite everybody out to vote on the 17th. And please get out and vote. It's so key and so critical. It's going to be a close race. And if they will get out there and help me, uh, I, I'm committed to make sure that their voice is heard and that uh, we make some good things happen. And if, if, if they get out and vote, We'll make District 2 bright again. Appreciate you being with us today.